Sasuke, for me, really took it to the next level in this chapter, and man, I am excited. Just very, very stoked to see more. Cannot wait. Naruto, number 68, Blood of the Uchiha. Ha <laughs> ha, boys, what I like to see. Woo! Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, had to bring you another review on the awesome, adventure-filled, one-on-one, battle-ridden tale, Naruto. Now, our last uh, chapter, of course, saw us with, uh, really, it looking like uh, Sasuke, as he was facing off against Yoroi, uh, looked like Yoroi was getting the upper hand until, at the end of the chapter, Sasuke went and pulled a technique out that looked very similar uh, to, uh, to Rock Lee's uh, front or forward lotus attack that he does, um, which obviously is like this kind of cool, like sort of crouch into a standing sidekick that, that jacks the dude way up into the air. Uh, nonetheless, though, obviously very cool, and uh, everybody was shocked to see it, especially uh, Guy and Rock Lee. But that's how the chapter ended off with him connecting and everybody being like, <gasps> you know, and that's where the chapter picks up. And man, it, this is a good one. This is, uh, this is certainly just uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's really cool getting into some of these battles, these one-on-one -on -one battles. Again, the action and the motion is depicted very well, I think, and it's drawn very well. Uh, it's much easier in this manga, above any other ones that I, I've personally read so far, to depict and tell where the trajectory is of somebody, how they got hit, where they got hit. And sometimes you still can't tell. It's difficult. I'm sure it's easier to, to pick out in the anime. Um, but the bottom line is is that I, I still think it's drawn very well and it conveys that motion very, very well. So anyways, we wind up going and, and as it's like a several page thing kind of as they're in midair. So he goes in and Sasuke, it looks like he kicks him, Yore, up in midair, right? And then it looks like he goes and at one point goes and gets around behind him to go and try to pull another move. And then it looks like Yoroi goes and gets the, the upper hand on him, you know, and it kind of looks like this sort of mid-air struggle that they've got going on. There's actually a page where it looks like they're both on the damn ceiling, and uh, there's just the way it's drawn and everything else, you know. And as they wind up going and kind of uh, kind of getting up there and, uh, I should say, like trading blows in mid-air or whatever you want to say, um, that, that cursed seal, that cursed mark from Orochimaru starts to grow, right? It starts to grow. It's like kind of like this tattoo that can like grow and, and then like, and then retract back in, uh, when he's able to keep it under control. And I think that kind of signifies that it's like the power of that cursed seal or that cursed mark sort of trying to come out, you know? So Sasuke all of a sudden is like, oh shit, because this thing starts to come out. And he's like, man, and then, and then Kakashi's like, okay, I got to call the match, you know, I'm going to have to step in on this one, right? And by sheer force of will, right, Sasuke just goes and mans up, dude, grabs his big boy balls, and just goes and fights that urge off or whatever that type of feeling is where this cursed seal or cursed mark wants to just kind of take over. And he's able to go and just kind of go, no, get back in there, you know? And uh, it's actually really cool. It sort of reminds me of, for some reason, the um, if anybody ever saw the animated movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, um, one of the characters, he's this uh, this uh, black uh, cop, and he's just kind of this real hard ass, and he kind of talks like this all the time. And I think he's actually voiced by Mr. T. But anyway, there's this part where it's either I think it's in the second one actually, where <laughs> where he goes and he looks like he's about to cry, and a tear is coming out. And he's like, "Don't you get back in there, tear!" <laughs> he's like yells at the tear and like just and it like sucks it back up into his eye, you know. Anyway, for, I know it's probably a bad uh, analogy, but for some reason that popped into my head when I saw him just kind of go and like, and then the mark just kind of recede, you know. And it was actually amazing. I mean, he impresses everybody. Uh, Kakashi, the Hokage, everybody's kind of looking. Anko, like, whoa, how was he able to get that under control and not let it just, you know, not let it take him over, you know? Anyways, as this all happens in this kind of multi-page, multi-panel battle of, of wills in mid-air, Sasuke winds up then turning the tables, of course, back in his favor, and he winds up just coming down and just does this move that is just, it absolutely, it's the uh, the, the uh, Shishi Rendon Barrage of Lions, I believe it was called, and that's how it translated in here. If it translates differently or, or people, you know, like it or know it differently, obviously you have to let me know in the comments down below. But I certainly think Barrage of Lions sounds pretty badass. And what it winds up being is uh, this page here that I actually had saved. And it winds up being the, uh, I got my, my nice son's, uh, my son gave me a wonderful smelly, uh, yeah, it's, it's bookmarked that I guess smells like watermelon. It's actually kind of cool. I use it in all my, my manga volumes that I'm in the, in the midst of reading right now and whatnot. And everything smells fresh and like a watermelon. So very nice. But anyway, you wind up getting this, man, which is just absolutely devastating. 
And what I mean by the conveyance of movement and action is just the way the lines are drawn and the ones that are coming down from here, the huge thrum, thwam, or thwam, or whatever the hell, you know, and just the way everything is done, not drawing a solid body and drawing actual lines makes it look like he's moving so supersonically fast and he's just like, boom, right into the ground, you know, and that's what it looks like to me. Like, he hit the ground so hard that, like, bones broke, blood spewed out of his mouth, he lost the tooth, shit his pants, and then popped back up into the air and pissed himself. That's what I see happening with something like that, you know, so... And then, and then you can even see, look at the look on everybody's faces. They're like, oh my god, holy shit, you know. And especially, um, you know, a Guy and, of course, Rock Lee, you know, they're kind of like, what the hell is going on? Because Rock Lee gets it. You know, he's like, okay, this dude's obviously, you know, he's like, Sasuke's obviously next level with this stuff. He was able to observe me using that technique on him just once with the shot and gun, and then was able to go and copy it and use it to go and, and obviously bail out and save his ass in this fight. Could he have used other moves? I don't know. The bottom line is, is that that makes him dangerous because Rock explains about, it, as he kind of inner monologue, and he talks about how um, this taijutsu, tai and, and I can vouch for it with different martial arts, physical abilities, it's a whole different story, man. Being able to go and jump kick somebody seven feet up in the air requires a lot of training, a lot of strengthening for your, for your height, your jump height, your accuracy, your speed, and your strength. And it all has to come together in one quick, fluid, split-second motion. So although this is a little more far-fetched, because obviously some of these moves are just, they're physically impossible in the real world, you can suspend disbelief a little bit because it's a fictional story, but a lot of what they say is actually rooted in, in, in real life things. And, and by that I mean that you do have to normally train and, and to be able to exert that type of force or that type of pinpoint accuracy. So uh, Sasuke being able to just copy it after he saw it once, uh, it takes a lot out of him, because even afterwards, he's like, whoa, you know what I mean? And I think it's just because his body was pushed to, you know, past the threshold of, of where he's normally at or where he's trained before. He's using muscles he probably wasn't even aware that he had, you know? And uh, I and I, what I like is, is it's not just like, okay, I just I just pulled this move out of my ass over here and used it, and, and now I'm the winner. They actually take some time to go and explain it. And then it's funny, because you get Guy over there, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, Kakashi, this is your student. Huh? He's thinking in his head, you know, and he's like, is everybody as dirty, you know, as like, he insinuated, like, is everybody as kind of as dirty um, as, as you were, you know, as far as, uh, you know, kind of coming up through through the ranks and what have you. Um, so he probably always looked at, I know Kakashi and him have their rivalry, but maybe he always looked at him as like, uh, you know, like like his use of the Sharingan mirror wheel eye, maybe being, you know, uh, maybe being like cheap or like an unfair advantage or something. I don't know. Uh, but the bottom line is, is this really shows the devastating effect of uh, being able to use that uh, other people's moves and being able to just and it shows how deadly it can be because you can pick up on them so quickly by having and knowing how to properly use the Sharingan. So those at least that's what I took from the whole chapter and the whole time man Orochimaru is looking on just you know, obviously disguised and whatnot but he's looking on like licking his lips and having a little weird reptilian orgasm um, because he's you know he's probably thinking like wow this is you know way beyond my expectations of what I thought this kid could do so uh, very cool stuff, and, and anyway, they wind up calling the match after that, because like I said, after, you know, what looked like he probably pissed himself, shit himself, maybe lost a tooth, you know, <laughs> a couple of broken ribs, I, I don't know, um, Yoroi would just look like he was he was not not doing well, and uh, so they come in and they called the match, and, and obviously declared Sasuke the winner, uh, and then the chapter winds up kind of wrapping up shortly after that, we wind up getting, um, uh, Kakashi winds up going and saying, listen, we're going to get you out of here, and then we're going to get you some medical care. They're talking about some medical treatment or what have you. And really what Kakashi winds up saying is like, listen, I'll take care of him. I'm going to go and seal away that cursed mark. So I don't know what he's going to do to do that, if there's some kind of spell he can put on it to like kind of uh, you know, suppress it or temporarily, permanently remove it. I don't know, but he, that's what he alludes to and says, like, I'm going to go take care of that. Come on with me. And Sasuke's like, what the hell? I want to see the fights, man, you know, because he wants to see what's going on with everybody else. Um, you know, and, and it was funny too because there was one point where Naruto was sitting there and he's just like, yeah, Sasuke, you won, but you look like an idiot, you know, because obviously when they both kind of hit the ground and he bounced off and he was just out of, you know, he just was out of juice, right? Um, but for, the, for me, the most impressive thing was the use of the Sharingan to save his ass and, and then, of course, to him being able to just go and kind of man up and like just kind of put that cursed seal away and kind of shrink it back down. That was, for me, the, the highlights of it. So anyway, at the end of it, they wind up announcing uh, the next two that are going to fight. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Abume, Abume and Shino. 
and uh, and and that's that's who's called for the uh, for the next battle. And obviously they're kind of going and you know they're looking at each other, facing off, all all angry. Uh, and that's of course after Orochimaru, you know, has, has been looking on and observing this whole thing. And really, it seems like everybody's thoroughly impressed with Sasuke. So I, I shouldn't just say Orochimaru having his little weird reptile gasm. Um, I mean, everybody, the Hokage, everybody who's looking on, Kakashi, even the other students are looking on like, oh fuck, you know, like man, I'm glad I didn't have to go up against this guy. At least that's that's what I took from it. So, and again, things wind up ending off with uh, with of course these two gonna go up against each other, Shino and Abume. So that is how the chapter ends, and my chapter question for you, brothers and sisters, is what impressed you more about Sasuke in this particular chapter? And again, if you're a Sasuke lover or hater, don't really care. I'm kind of indifferent when it comes to that stuff. I think he's a cool character. But uh, if you answer the question, do me a favor. If you don't want to answer it, fine, because you don't like Sasuke. I don't care. Um, but if you do decide to answer it, you know, just answer it objectively as what was more impressive to you, the fact that Sasuke was able to go and kind of put away the cursed seal and just sort of just, you know, just uh, will it to go back, or his use of the Sharingan after seeing that technique, uh, obviously used on him against him from, from Rock, just that one time, um, and then of course being able to go and, and pull that out and use that technique. So, uh, so again, which one was more impressive to you? Uh, about Sasuke in this particular chapter. So leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you think that I deserve it, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We look forward to catching all of you in the next one, Nation. Remember to subscribe to my other channels and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram too.